Hey folks, Richard Tubb here. Now you may recall that a short while ago we did a video demo with Steve from Orvik and we've got Steve to join us again today. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing great. How are you, Richard? Very well indeed. Now, when we recorded that video demo a little while back, there was a piece that was just around the corner that we couldn't jump into during that video demo. And we said we'd bring you back to take a look at it. What was that piece that we were talking about? So that was our Power BI reporting templates that we had put together. Uh, so I'm excited to be able to talk about those a little bit today. Yeah. Tell us more about the report and why is it so important? You know, I, I think it's one of the most common requests that we get from our MSP partners is being able to report more both from Ovic and from all their tools. Um, just looking from, you know, high level view to be able to present reports to clients, uh, as well as to help them understand whether they're delivering value, help them understand, you know, overall, how is, are the networks that they're managing performing? Uh, and so re reporting is kind of that, that term that gets thrown around to cover a lot of, a lot of different things, but basically how, how do we take all the awesome data that Ovic has collected and give that to our users in a meaningful way. Yeah, because super important from, from an MSP's perspective, managed service provider, you can be doing all this work behind the scenes and keeping everything running smoothly for your clients, and then you end up in that pretty awful situation where things are going so well that the client says, what is it we're paying you for? Because they don't feel the pain anymore. That's one of the reasons that reporting is so important, isn't it, Steve, to demonstrate the value you're de delivering to clients. For sure. And I think that's a, an awesome spot to be in. If you if you are being that proactive to keep your customers' networks up that often, that, you know, that, that's a great problem to have. Basically, what, what we've done is we've set out some reporting templates. Uh, we have uh, you know, a bunch of technical APIs that we've sort of built out that provide data up, up to, uh, to drive these reports. But basically, the intent was to, uh, rather than build a custom you know, out-of-the-box reporting within Ovic, it was how do we use tools that are already in the MSP's tool stack. And in this case, we've you know, really you know, leveraged that Power BI uh, platform to build out templates that you can pull from Ovic data. And we've already built a ton of templates that allow you to get value from day one, um, but you can then go in and customize them, or you can add different data sources. You can pull in data from your RMM if you wanted to, or, in, or from another platform. Um, or you could just take the templates that we built and you know borrow some of the, <laughs> the, the magic that we've done there and build them into a template you already have. Is ultimately like you know seeing a report from Avic with Avic info is great, but oftentimes I want to be looking across tools and across platforms as well. So both you know integrating with third parties as well as uh, like third party vendors that reporting is their specialty, as well as these Power BI reports are kind of different ways that we're trying to give this reporting, give this visibility of the Avic platform to our MSP partners, sort of across their different tools. Makes sense. I'm intrigued. Power BI, although it's very popular, why did you get down the Power BI route instead of maybe building your own sort of reporting there? Yeah, so I think it just came down to um, the customization and the flexibility that you get by leveraging a platform like Power BI. I mean, like, there's there's upsides and downsides to absolutely everything. Uh, but with uh, Power BI in particular, it is a tool set that a lot of uh, our MSP partners are already familiar with. It was one that because there are a lot of Microsoft shops, they have the license. And so it just made sense as this being sort of a, a starting point. Can we take a look at it? Can you do a screen share and show us what you've built? Our first dashboard that we've sort of built out, which is our what we call our QBR dashboard, which is exactly to that point you mentioned earlier, Richard. Client tells you that things are going so well. What exactly am I paying you for again? And this is where you can kind of come in and highlight the behind the scenes, all the you know the hamsters in the hamster wheel. Maybe that's a, a bad analogy here, but you know we've been doing a lot of work to keep your network up and running. You know we've been actioning alerts, re resolving them. We've been identifying what inventory is at risk. There's a bunch of, of of things that we've done to keep that network up and running. And so our, our first sort of um, QBR report really delivers on that. So all built in uh, Power BI, you said it's a, a template. Is this available to every Ovic user or is it something something additional? Yeah, it's available to every Ovic user right on our support page. You can download the templates. Um, when you set it up the first time, you get to drop in a couple of options. You know, here I've just, we're put in and we're recording on the January timeframe, but you can you know pick and choose whatever sort of timeframe you want here put in your uh, domain prefix. So you, you need an account set up in the Ovic system uh, to do this with the right permissions. Again, the KB article runs all through it pretty easily, but most users, if you were the one that sort of signed up for the account originally, it's it's pretty easy to get going just to drop in your credentials here. This is very cool. Have you seen many MSPs using this at the moment? Because I can imagine when I was running an MSP business, we used to have a dashboard similar to this. It yep. took a lot of work and we had it displayed in the office so that everybody in the team could see it. Obviously, COVID times, things are slightly different, but how are you seeing MSPs use this? 
Yeah, so we, we see it used in a number of different ways. That is absolutely one of the ways where it becomes sort of that, um, you know, overall status dashboard, whether it's updated daily or weekly. You know, we have something similar at the Ovic business that we put up on, on our screens in the office that are, how's our business performing? And so we may look at this as that kind of, you know, overall, how are we delivering value to our customers? Um, I would say one of the big ways that uh, our, our partners use this is by uh, customizing and configuring some of the reports. So I'll dive down here into this device performance one as an example. Um, so this is, again, this is the out of the box reporting where if I was to pick on a specific asset, you know, it's going to tell me all the details I need to know about this device. And in, in this case, you know, we can see, you know, a memory usage sort of climbing up over time. I can identify that trend and start to be proactive on that. And, and so we have a, a couple of partners that have done this, but what I'm thinking of in particular, they're, they're based in, um, uh, I can't remember exactly which European Union country, but they're based in, in, the EU, in our EU cluster, at least. Sure. Um, they have leveraged this type of reporting to help build out a customized report for their customers. Their customer needed to see a, uh, an overall interface utilization and an interface uptime on specific circuits, on specific links. So leveraging this template, they then built out that report to, to present to their customer on a weekly basis to say, hey, look, all your links are up, all of your, you know, they're all performing at whatever is acceptable capacity. Um, yeah. and, and they started with that template to do that. What about customization? So um, obviously you've got templates here. I'm presuming these just work out the box as we as we can see here. But if yep. somebody wanted to grab it and perhaps had a bit of Power BI experience, how difficult is it for them to customize these reports? So we've built it in such a way that for a lot of use cases, you don't need to customize it. And that's why some of these different filters and everything are built in. So as an got example it. here, you know, I can select which client sites I want to just report on. So I, that's not something that I need any experience to be able to, con to configure. If I want to look at specific devices or device types, and I only want to look at one specific location, or I only want to look at you know just my firewalls, um, you know I, I can do this without needing any Power BI experience. But so this is provided as is. You don't need any real Power BI experience. You can just jump into these templates, and and away you go. It's going to start pulling the information from Orbic. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Hey, I, it, I'm intrigued from the perspective of presenting this information to clients. Uh, is this something, would you uh, delegate access to these uh, Power BI reports or would you produce it as like a PDF or some other type of exportable format to send to them? Great question. So what I would often see is that uh, our MSC partners are taking a, a PDF format of this and presenting it as part of a whether it's a QBR or just a monthly email or something like that, rather than providing direct access. Although, again, similarly, if you'd set up an account for them and they have the access or API, you could, right? They could have this dashboard set up on there and if, if they wanted to. But I would say more often it's, um, you know, uh, especially because it allows the MSP a little bit more control over what the what's being presented to the client. They'll review the dashboards, put those together, uh, and then ultimately send that send that to the client, whether it's in person or, or over email uh, at the end of the quarter, end of the month, whatever it may be. Anything else sure. that we should see before we wrap up here? Because this is such an important area of, of running an MSP business that so many MSPs overlook, unfortunately, because they're concentrating on the fixing, but not demonstrating they're doing the fixing. Is there anything else that you can tell us about the dashboard before we wrap up? Yeah, I mean, I could dive into the other couple of dashboards. There are a couple more along the bottom we didn't touch on to. I don't want to sort of drown through the, the clicking for too yeah. long, but if there's other information that you know you want to see in here, I would encourage all of, you know, if you're a current Avic, uh, Avic partner, uh, go in, download the templates, give it a try and, you know, uh, come in and play around and look around in, inside the templates and find out if there's the information you need. Uh, and if not, bring us that feedback as well, right? This is, this is always a living, breathing document. We actually make the source available. Uh, so if the community wants to contribute as well, all those links are in our, our KB article. If somebody wanted their hand held, they're an Orvit customer already, they wanted to go through this, uh, what's the best way for them to, uh, to reach out to Orvit and get some help with this? Sure. So uh, you can check out the resource on our support site. If you want a little bit more hand holding, your customer success manager has all the details and will be able to uh, set you up with this. Uh, if you're brand new and working with our onboarding team, it's often something that they'll introduce as the, you're sort of bringing you through the onboarding process. Uh, so the resources are all there. Just put up your hand and ask. No worries. And for anybody watching this who's not an Orvic client at the moment, what's the next best step for them? Take it for a trial spin, right? If you haven't uh, had your hands wet with Ovic before, go ahead, ovic.com, sign up for a trial. And this is a, available for, for all folks in trial as well. So once you get, you, first you have to obviously start to manage a network to start to report on it, but that uh, get that trial started and you can absolutely um, check it out. Steve writes some incredible blogs on uh, the Orvit website as well that I'd encourage you uh, to check out some really good quality content. So thank you, Steve, for all that information and thanks for taking the time today. 